So I'm excited for chapter four uh, because chapter four, uh, well, it's one of my favorite chapters in the book. And so it's the first chapter that we build a full stack web application uh, with ASP.NET MVC core. And so up until now, we haven't really interacted with the database. And really that's what this chapter is all about, building a data-driven via a SQL database uh, web application. And so this is a very, is a project that we're used to doing by now, which is uh, pick your thing. We're gonna build a movie application. So a database to track movies, as well as, you know, a movies, of course, a movie title, a movie year, uh, ratings for the movie, like one to five star kind of thing. Um, and so, yeah, so we're going to be building a full stack web app in .NET uh, MVC. And um, let's start by opening up Visual Studio 2022 and creating a new project. Now, the template that we select here is ASP.NET Core Web App Model View Controller. It's the same template we've been using. Um, so find that on your list of templates and click Next. Um, where it goes on your hard drive is the location. I'm just gonna accept the default. I'm gonna call this um, Data Driven. No, I'm just gonna call this Movies solution movie solution how about that and then i'm going to call this movie project just so we can kind of distinguish the difference in the solution name and the project name um, we'll call those different things i encourage you guys to code along um, this is a really good chapter to do that This is a one one time. Yeah, this is not one that's necessarily going to be continued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could put it wherever you like. And click next. Uh, I'm going to uncheck HTTPS. Um, actually, you know, you could leave that checked. It, it it's fine. But I'm going to uncheck it. Authentication type is none. Again, we're not going to have user accounts for this. We could change that if we wanted to with a drop-down list. And well, the only framework I have is .NET 8. Um, you might have some different frameworks there depending on, depending on how long you've had Visual Studio installed. Um, let's click Create. Okay, so it gives us a file and folder structure that we've um, we've been exposed to. Now, the first thing um, when we're working with databases is we need to install dependencies to allow us to work with the database. Okay, right now, um, the dependency is not pre-installed. We get to install these dependencies. And the way that we do that in the .NET world is with uh, the NuGet package manager. So you've, you've heard of this package manager. Um, and it's with some tools called Entity Framework. And so um, we're gonna install these Entity Framework tools that again, Entity Framework is what's referred to as an ORM, an Object Relational Mapper. It maps our C-sharp classes to tables in a database. So ORMs map your C-sharp classes to database tables. That's the mapper, if you will. And again, we have to install this under our tools and we're gonna go NuGet Package Manager and we'll use the GUI versus the console. And I find this a little bit weird, but, but it's nonetheless, my, this is just how my brain works. We're gonna click on Browse and the two packages that we're searching for is Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server. Now I'm gonna point this out. If you just search for Entity Framework Core, okay, my assumption, my incorrect assumption, is that if I just search for micro and, and, and I hit enter here, notice this package has uh, 935 million downloads. 
Okay, but this is actually not the package that we're installing. We're going to install the SQL server that, what was the last number? This only has 423 million downloads. My assumption is that the Entity Framework Core, like if you just install this root package, that it would include SQL Server. Um, but if I kind of look here, um, I don't, and it's 935 million downloads. Um, by installing, here's what I can say, by installing SQL Server, we're not installing the additional stuff that we don't need, okay? So we're just installing SQL Server, and then you click on your movie project, and then you click Install. Okay, so this is the first package that we're going to install. Um, and again, we're not installing any additional tools or features that we don't need. So click on Install, and then I'll just click Don't Show Again and click Apply, and then Accept. And... Oh, I got the little green check mark. I'm like, I know there's a green check mark. Where is it? Okay, green check mark is checked. So we've installed that dependency. Okay, so that's the first dependency. And the next one is the tools. So we're installing SQL Server on one, and we're installing one called tools. Okay, and then kind of the same process. Click on Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools. Select your movie project, click install, wait for the green check mark, accept what you need to accept. You get the green check mark. And you've now basically installed a couple of packages that are going to allow us to connect into a SQL Server database uh, via, via our MVC project. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two is what are the things that we're tracking, you know? And so what are the, the models? Um, I'm going to expand on this, but what we're going to build today is just a movies database, right? And, you know, how... <clears throat> what properties are in your models and how they're related to one another. These are all valid questions, but I'm going to then, I'm just going to continue and I'm going to create my movie model, right? So if I right click model, I'm going to add a class. A model is just a C sharp class. And I'm going to call this my movie model. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of code my movie model. I'll explain it as I go, and then I'll pause. I'm going to condense my Solution Explorer so you can see everything. I'll pause so you guys can catch up because I generally go pretty fast. Public int movie ID, get set. It is worth noting this is our primary key, right? This is going to, the movie ID is going to automatically be a primary key in our database. Public string name get set we are setting up our name field to have a default value of an empty string and we're gonna set we need to bring in a using statement up at the top for our data annotation so using system dot component model dot data annotations this is gonna allow us to add these attributes such as required with an error message for some validation. A nullable year type. Now this doesn't say please enter a description, it says please enter a year. And we'll give it a range. And of course we'll add up to 2024. 
between 1900 and 2024 are our valid years and a nullable rating. Question? So here's why we're making these nullable. Um, in my experience, and, and I know several people saw this yesterday, these error messages that you're asking for, um, when, when you go to validate on your view, you actually won't get these error messages um, unless the data type here was nullable. Um, also, when, when a movie loads, like you might have a null year, it's like a new movie. Um, so the first answer I have is that I noticed without making data types nullable, my error messages weren't coming up proper. Um, and so strings are inherently nullable. You can automatically, so these ints are not nullable by default. So that's why there's a difference between the string and our ints um, because strings are nullable, right? Um, and so, yeah, I, I would just say making them nullable makes you get the correct error messages, number one. Number two, when you instantiate a new uh, movie, there's a chance that year is set to null by the framework. The framework might set year to null, so it needs to be nullable. Yeah. I didn't finish that. Yeah, thank you. No, the up top that you can enclose it. Oh, semicolon, thank you. Okay. So if I kind of zoom out just a little bit, get this on screen. We, maybe I, I'm not opposed. Go for it. So the next thing that we're going to create is this class called a DB context. And I think of the DB context file as the class for connecting to the database. Okay, so there's a C sharp class that's going to help us actually make a connection into, into our back end database. Additionally, the database context is going to have to use a connection string. Remember, a connection string is just the credentials for connecting to the database. Where is the database? What's the IP address? Where is it at on the internet or local host? And what are the credentials to get in? So this DB context is going to interact with a connection string. And so we're going to create this inside of our models as well. So inside of models, we're going to add a class. And this is going to be called our context class. The name of our class is movie context. And it's a C sharp class. So you can do dot CS. If you leave the dot CS off, it'll add it on for you. Now, the using statement here is entity framework core. And so entity framework core is going to allow us to inherit from DB context. Now, this is pretty close to exactly what I need. So line six, our DB set is a, think of it as a list of movies, but it's coming from the database. So what we're going to do with this property, so this is a property, notice it's got a get and set block. We're going to store essentially a list of movies. Anytime that we create a movie context, 
we'll be able to access our movies out of the database. Now, so this is just a property, and that property is going to be used to store our movies. Notice line 8. Line 8 is a public method by the name of movie context. So what, what kind of method is that? That method has a special name. This, this method is called the class what? Not all at once. A method that has the same name as the class is called? Constructor. Yeah. It's called the constructor, right? So line eight, this is our movie constructor. Um, the, well, let's talk about this constructor. It, it accepts something called options, and it just passes that up to the parent class. And so notice the parent class is DB context, and so it just takes in a uh, db context options and we don't really do much with that um, but it allows us to configure options for our for our uh, db context object and so we don't notice, and this is just kind of uh, call it boilerplate. But so here, the main thing that I like out of this file, again, what is this file? It's going to help us connect into the database. When we instantiate a movie context, it'll have a movie's property, which we can then query and work with the data out of our database. Okay, what we're going to wind up doing, if you guys vaguely familiar or vaguely remember writing link statements we're going to write link statements against this movies collection and so we could say you know select the movie with the title blah or select the movies with the years less than 2000 all these link statements to allow us to query the data in our database Okay, now, now that we have this movie context, we have our movie class. I'm sorry, was anyone still coding? Ready to go? Kind of, oh, no problem. So movie context. The next thing we wanna do is generate some seed data. Seed data is gonna actually fill the table with dummy data. Um, And so this is still going to be inside of movie context. Uh, so actually, we're going to stay in this file. Now, uh, I'm, I'm going to modify this. The default value for our movies is going to be null. We're not going to have movies by default. And I'm trying to remember what the exclamation point does on our null. Um, oh boy. Now I remember. I think what happens is that if you leave that exclamation point off, you get this green squiggly. The green squiggly says cannot convert null literal to non nullable reference type. Um, so uh, notice we got null on the right, but we don't have a question mark over here, right? So it's a non-nullable type on the left. We got a null on the right, so you get a green squiggly. Um, but the exclamation point says, um, ignore that warning. It's okay. Um, that's all that exclamation point does for us. Okay, C data. Let's write a protected method to override on model creating, and you can tab this in, and then we say model builder, which is our variable, dot entity, angle brackets, movie. So here's 
C data dot has data and new movie movie ID one uh, this is way too much data so I'm gonna say movie ID is one I like title of the Godfather I don't have title we have name the Godfather year sure and rating of five put a semicolon at the end of that to make it happy so this would be to seed one movie of course you could seed all the movies you want uh, separated by commas and so I'm gonna see how about three movies copy paste paste delete the last comma and we'll change up the names Nineteen forty-two. Okay. Yeah, we definitely need different movie IDs. Now we're providing movie IDs here, but if you were to leave that off, it should still work. And I, I always, you know, I, I, let's not do that here, but primary keys would be generated for you, the values, if you left that off your seed data. Um, but we're just gonna hard code that in. Okay, next, now that we have our C data, we need to actually wire up that connection string. And so the connection string is configured in the app settings.json file. So in the root of your solution and your project, I should say, app settings JSON. We've got allowed hosts. We're gonna add a comma after that star. connection strings and this is an object so this is a property called connection string object now uh, the name of our context file we called it movie context now The odds of a typo here are high. And so I am kind of curious about my, let me see, servers, local DB. Local DB is a version of Microsoft SQL Server that's free, right? When you install the tools that you installed when you installed Visual Studio, it comes with a free version of SQL Server called local DB. Um, trusted connection is true and multiple active results set is true. So all this is good. The one thing I will change is this is my database name. And I'm just going to call my database equal to the movies database. And it does need to all be on one line. So let me kind of zoom out just a little bit more for you to see this all in one line and I'll hold it here. Um, it is worth noting as you're typing this out, just to verify you've got local DB installed, you can go to View Object Explorer. Let's see if I can find SQL Server Object Explorer. Now this is a window you're gonna wanna have opened up anyway, so go ahead and open up Object Explorer. And right here you could see local DB, MS SQL local DB. So you could see that you've got this database and I've got a couple things under here already right and I'm gonna auto hide that object explorer for future reference okay the next chunk of code is uh, gonna get the so we made this class in our models called the movie context class and I said 
This has a properties in it that's gonna basically store the, the movies in or from the database. Okay, so this class, Movie Context, we need to be able to work with it inside of our controller, right? A request comes into a controller, so we have to work with this Movie Context class inside of our controllers. Well, in order to make this class accessible to our controllers, there's a one line of code uh, that we have to add to our, um, to our program CS. So remember program CS, this is the file where we kind of build our web application. This is our, this is our application server, if you will. Um, so we need to add a line. Again, this is all of our middleware after we add controllers with views. And if you guys remember anything from JavaScript, raise your hand if the order of your middleware screw with you at some point, right? You had problems because the order of your middleware were most of the classes raising their hand. So the order that you call these methods matter, and it's the same thing over here. Um, so we're gonna uh, add entity framework core dependency injection okay basically this is going to inject our context class into our controllers so that we can work with our context class in our controllers and let's see if that is actually right now here's builder services add db context movie context options arrow options use equals server builder configuration get connection string and our connection string name is movie context now we need to recognize this type and uh, okay so if you saw that I just used the show potential fixes and I brought in a using statement at the top to bring in our models so that movie context is recognized and let's do the same thing with our using statement for use SQL server now our connection string here let's make sure our connection string here is called movie context right so movie context is the name of our connection string and so this name in quotes needs to match this name in quotes. If those names don't match, of course, this doesn't work. Again, the short version of what this does is it allows us to work with our movie context files in our controllers so that we can query the data from our database. So we've actually done uh, quite a lot and um, if I kind of close everything down, what we're ready to do is actually create our, create our database. Um, we've kind of done everything. We've done all the legwork to create our database. And the way that this is done in the entity framework world is by creating what's called the migration. Now, just a quick one off. Um, you know, I, uh, I was working with, uh, not working with, but you know, we were talking about me being a runner. So I was running the other day in a group. <clears throat> Just so happened one of the guys I was running with is a developer. He codes Entity Framework Core and he does it for Ameren, right? You guys know Ameren, you know, Ameren, Illinois Power, Ameren, Missouri Power. So he's an application developer, has been so for about 10 years. And he was telling me that he's having to learn migrations. And so I thought, oh, that's kind of funny. You should come on in into my class. I'll, you know, the point is, um, this chapter covers a whole lot. We hit migrations in deeper detail, but basically, what a migration is is going to be uh, a file that helps you create and uh, change your database. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. So a migration is a file that will help you create and modify your database design. Like, again, a lot of this is gonna be done for us, so let's, let's dive in and take a look. So, tools. 
We're going to do NuGet Manager, but we're going to do the Council. Okay, so as opposed to the GUI, we're going to look at the terminal, the command line terminal. And we're going to add uh, a command. Uh, the command is add migration. And this is the name of your, this is the name of your database. So I might call it, well, the book calls it initial. I would want to call it like create database, but we'll just call it initial. And so this is the initial migration, but it's the create database migration. And let's hit enter. And let's see what errors we get, if any. Hopefully none. But if everything's wired up correctly, then this will work. But if I have a typo somewhere, obviously it won't. Okay, this file that it created means that everything's working. If you got an error, I'll come around and help you out, okay? Notice this file that it created. I, I can close this file. It created a migrations folder with an initial file with some numbers in front of it. And what's going on inside of this file? Notice what it's doing. This is writing SQL Server. Uh, excuse me, this is writing SQL, not SQL Server, this is writing SQL, SQL code to create a table, create a new table with these data types and these columns and this is our primary key movie ID. Notice it's an uh, identity column. It is a primary key. So you really don't have to interact with this file but it's good to look at this file and realize what's, what is it doing. It's creating a table and it's inserting data. Okay, so we just created our first migration. Okay, now we need to run that code. So there's two steps here. First step one, create the migration. Step two, run the migration. Okay, so again, um, got the whole class up and running. Now, now where we're at is we created this, this migration file that is going to kind of um, create these snapshots of the database at different points. And so your database design might change over time. And every time your database design changes, it creates a snapshot. So you can like roll forward and roll back to different database designs if that ever becomes something you need to do. So the initial is like, hey, we initially created the database and it's just one table with certain data types for the columns, primary key, and some data in it. Um, I will mention, because I saw this at least once, if you don't notice the convention here, movie and the primary key just has the class name followed by the ID. And so that's the convention. The ID is the primary key, but it has to match the name of the class. So whatever the name of your class is here, the ID column just has to be the same name with with the value ID. And I don't think it matters whether it's a capital I and a capital D or a lowercase ID. It just needs to be the, you know, the letters ID. I don't think it's case sensitive. Okay, but now that we have the migration, we run an update database command, I think is correct. Oh, oh, not, not correct. Update hyphen database. Okay, this is gonna run our migration file and actually create our database. I get the message done here, which allows me to go into my SQL Server local DB, refresh this because uh, you got to do that. And there you see our movies database. If I expand my tables, I see my movies table. If I right click the movies table and view data, voila. So this is, this is something different. Um, my class, I don't think anyone actually has the database other than me, maybe? A couple people do, but a couple people don't. And so I want to invite you guys that if you don't, here's what I want you to do. Go to View and open up your Object Explorer. So you're going to need to open this up. Now, I have two. These are called instances. These are instances of SQL Server. One called MSSQL Local DB. The other instance is called Project Models. And so what I noticed on one student is they didn't have this instance of SQL Server running. And so does everyone else have project models? Raise your hand if you have project models. 
And how, okay, let me ask this question. How many people don't have MSSQL local DB? Raise your hand if you're missing MSS, at least one. I know Nathan's two. So where do you need to change that? Well, let's, let's see where we coded where we coded that. So in our connection string, notice right here, MSSQL local DB. This was our instance name. If you don't have MSSQL local DB, you're going to need to probably put slash project models here instead of MSSQL local DB. Because again, these are this is the version local DB, and then the version has multiple instances potentially. You can run many instances of SQL Server. And so these are just different instances of the software running. And so if you if you don't have one, you got the other, you need to change, you need to change it right here in your app settings.json. Okay, I did notice that if if on your object explorer you're missing local DB, you can right-click SQL Server click add SQL server because this should be installed click local and then you just click local and click connect and it will connect you to local DB and then if you already ran the update database command then your movies database should be there okay so just kind of working our way through these different scenarios on these different computers so now that we've got movie in a table in a database we're going to now get it into a web page. And so in order to get into a web page, of course, we need to start in the controller. The controller needs to make a connection to our model, get the data through and that, that model, is, by the way, the movie context, and then send it to the view. So controller, get the data, send it to the view. So we're going to start in the home controller. Open up the home controller. Let's delete the stuff we don't need, like the logger, the logger, privacy and error, don't need it. All we have is the index action method. And on this controller, let's see what we need to bring in. Let's bring in models. We got models and we've got MVC. I think, I think we should be good. Um, what we need to do is bring in a movie context. So I'm going to say private movie context called context, get and set. Again, remember the context is making that connection to the database. Sir. You can, it's optional. Yeah, so so what does the underscore mean? That means instance field, which is different than property. This is a property. So the convention that we used for properties that we're not following is a capital C, different than an underscore C. So underscore C, we were using for instance fields. You know, but I'm just kind of following the book example and their convention in the book is lowercase context. So I'm just sticking with that. Now we're gonna have our controller initialize that property so look at line 13 we're setting context equal to ctx this con this constructor accepts okay that that dependency injection Remember I said the dependency and injection is going to allow our context to be passed to a controller? Well, that's what this is right here. Whenever this constructor, whenever this controller is initialized, by default, it accepts a movie context and initializes this context field. Now remember, a movie context has a list of movies. It has is a DB set of movies, but think of it as a set of movies. So, what we can do inside of our index method, now that we have this context initialized, we can use link to write queries against our movies collection. Sir? This dot context is perfectly fine. Um, this dot 
context typically refers to the instance field context, which is this guy right here. Um, yeah, that should not cause any issues. Um, you will see this is a naming violation. You should begin your with a capital case letter. Again, I don't like that. But if you do, then you would just do this. You do capital C, and then you do capital C, right? And then that, that kind of fixes that. Um, okay. So now that we have a context, let's load up our movies. We're going to do a select star. Context dot movies. Um, here's where we're going to write a little bit of link. And we're just going to do an order by clause. Um, where we're ordering by the movie dot name. And doing a like a to list. So this is a little link query that's basically a select star from our movies collection. Right? And we're ordering it by or sorting it by the movie name. And then we're going to return that to our return that to our view. Of course, now we're sending a a list of movies to our view, but we need to receive that list of movies and and display it. Okay, so let's go to our index CSHTML inside of our home view. So we're going to go views home index. I'm going to make this a strongly typed view at model is a list of I should just be able to say movie and then I'll set the page title to my movie list and um, just kind of bare bones this let's go ahead and just add a table bootstrap table got some borders and some striping going on up in the head we're gonna have four uh, th tags for the uh, name year rating and this one will be left blank named year rating I'm gonna hold Highlight control A, control KF does a little format for me. Kind of interesting that it doesn't indent my THs like I would ex like I would like it to. Is my linter stupid? I'm gonna ignore it. Um, check out this razor syntax. Anytime you see the at symbol in the CSHTML. We're talking razor syntax. We're writing a for each loop. We're looping through every movie inside of our list of movies, right? The, the model is our list of movies. For each movie, we're displaying a row. Oh, I know what I did. I forgot my TR. TR tag right here. Now control A, control F. Now it's doing right by me. We're looping through our movies and making a table row for every movie, spitting out the movie's name, the movie's year, the movie's rating. Um, all of this auto code was pretty good except for my my buttons at the end to edit and my, delete my buttons. Um, 
this is movie ID. Movie at again this is in right here. So my var movie, this is dot movie ID. And this is movie ID. So what was generated here is a couple of bootstrap buttons, an edit button and a delete button. Looking a little bit closer, you see a new tag helper called ASP-route-ID. This is going to generate a URL with the movie ID as part of the route. So it'll be... Um, oh, let's change this. We're going to make a movie controller to edit and a movie controller to delete. So we're going to create a new controller to edit and to delete. And so the controller is movie. The action is edit. That's the second part of the route. So it's slash movie slash edit slash one slash edit slash two. So part of the URL will tell us what movie we're changing using the, the movie ID up in the URL. All right, now um, let's see what breaks. And I know you guys are still typing, but we should, if this uh, doesn't have any errors, we should be at least displaying our movies in our page. Yay. Takes a minute to spin up the first time. And voila. And we got an edit button. Take a look when you hover that it's slash movie slash edit slash two slash movie slash delete slash two. Right? So we can add some actual bootstrap classes to make it look like that. But again, those are that URL is being generated from our tag helpers. Does that make sense? Connor? Yeah. Oh, after the right. Alphabetical by name because of the link query. Okay. Uh, the next operation I want to do is an add. And so maybe up above my table, we'll go ahead and create a button. Uh, to add a, um, and we'll put this inside of a div, just some margin bottom on this div, and an anchor tag, uh, ASP controller, we don't have this movie controller, ASP action will be the add action. And this will be add movie. And we'll just throw some bootstrap classes because we all like a good class button. How about we put that in the right place? Class of BTN button. Sure. So on our home page, we get this little add movie button. Okay, now it's going to wire that up to a movie controller and an add action. So that's what we're going to create next. I'm going to close my context and close my home controller. So let's go ahead and make that controller, that movie controller. In Solution Explorer, under our controllers, let's add controller, empty controller movie controller <clears throat> now let's uh, bring in our movie context
And very similar to what we did before is initialize our context on the constructor. So we, we just literally wrote this code on the home controller. And we're doing the same thing so that our movie controller can work with our database. We got to, you know, by bringing in movie context, we work with our database. Yeah, this line two um, was brought in automatically when I, I think, hit tab to bring in the movie context class. So let's write our... get method so when you when we click this button this is not a post this is a get we're gonna get a page the page is gonna you know be the page to add the movie um, now there's something a little you know um, call it you know the book is going for some efficiency here um, and it's, it's a little different. Like normally I would think that, you know, there would be a view for the add view. Um, but um, we can actually see here this add method sends us to a view called the edit view. So edit and add I mean, essentially, they have the same controls on, on the web page. Think about it, right? You're adding a new movie, and you're editing a movie. The controls are the same. And so we're going to use the same view for both operations, for both the add and the edit. Connor, what's your question, sir? You mean this right here? Yes, this link is linking us to the movie controller that we just created. So this word movie right here will take us to the movie controller and the add ASP action takes us to this method. That suffix is um, automatic. It is a requirement of your controllers to have the suffix controller. Oh, okay. Right? It's a requirement of all of our controllers to have the word controller in them. Like it would always grab. Just right? That Notice that that convention's not here. Like it's not movie model. That That's not a requirement of our models. It is a requirement of our controllers. Yeah. So what would happen? I've never tried it. You're welcome to try. I'm going to guess it breaks. <laughs> no worries. That's, I'm, glad we're, I'm glad we're hitting these basics. So by clicking this link, it's going to take us to this method. Notice it sends us to the edit view. It's sending us to an edit CSHTML inside of our views folder for movies. And in there, it sends a new movie, an empty movie. Okay, so we need to create this edit view inside of uh, inside of our views. So inside of views, notice we have home and shared. So by convention, I have to create a new folder, add a folder uh, that is movie. No, nope, movie. And now the file is edit CSHTML. Add a view, razor view, called edit CSHTML dot CSHTML. So with this edit CSHTML, I just want to get this to load. I'll do a model of a movie. Okay, and I will maybe do a view bag dot title is edit movie. Now, actually, because it's, we can actually do something cool here. We could say 
uh, viewbag.title equals uh, here, here, um, viewbag.action. Okay, now here we set the action to add movie. Right? So that should go, this should go up into our title. We set this action property in our view bag to add new movie. Here, we're setting the view bag title. And I'll just do a, do a little H2 here and throw that view bag uh, dot action in here as well. Okay. So um, all I'm trying, all I want to do is get this page to load with the headings, and that's kind of where I'm at. So by clicking this add movie link, it takes me to movie slash add that calls the edit view, but notice it says add new movie here and it says add new movie here. So all this is wiring up just fine. And now we get to code our form to add a new movie. Now notice we have uh, an add method, but when we post this form, we're going to post it to an edit method. So I'm going to do a form ASP action is edit. So this is going to be the edit action of the movie controller. It's implied movie controller. Um, method, it's a post. And let's go ahead and do our validation summary. Div ASP validation summary for all class is bootstrap text danger. So we've got some red text for validation errors. Okay, we're going to code uh, name first, a uh, label for name, input for name, and a span for name. Um, I don't need this third tag here because I'll just do my validation summary to kind of catch it all. Okay, so once I have this kind of once, I can post it again for year and again for rating, year and rating, change the properties, rating, rating. Now there's a fun little hidden field for the movie ID. Um, obviously a hidden control is not displayed on the page. It's of no concern to the user what our movie IDs are. And finally, we need a button to submit. Button type of submit. Class is button, button primary. We'll say save, and maybe a cancel button. So a secondary button that takes us to ASP home. So I'm gonna, ASP controller is the home controller. The index method, so so the cancel doesn't add a new movie, it just sends us back to the home page. So there's everything that we've coded so far that's gonna wire us up for adding a new movie. So the next step is going to be to code the post method, which is this edit method, 
And keeping in mind this edit method is gonna do one of two operations. It's either gonna do an add operation or an edit operation. I think it's a little more complex than it needs to be the way that this is all wired up. Like I would probably just write a add page and, a, and an add method, but here I, I could see the efficiency gains that they're going for. And I will say the movie ID hidden field, um, a new movie, you know, I don't know that that will actually store uh, that ID uh, like for a new movie. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it will. Maybe it'll show the I, you know, movie ID of four. Um, but definitely for edits, like if you're editing number one or number two or whatever, it'll be able to hold the movie ID here because you have to know what movie you're changing. Um, so, again, to kind of glance at it and just see how this form is looking. If I click add movie, now we've got a bootstrap form, name, year, and rate. They're all empty. And if I click save, well, it's not gonna do anything yet, right? So I'm not even gonna, but I click cancel and take me home. If I click save, eh, not, doesn't work, of course, wouldn't expect it to. So that's where we are at the moment. Okay, and now again, what we need to do is an edit method of the movie controller. So we don't have an edit method. So, and it's gonna be a post, right? So this is HTTP post. So after we post our form, public I action result edit. Now the movie is gonna be sent in. I'm gonna write this line at a time so we don't overwhelm what we're doing here. So the movie is gonna be sent from the front end into this edit method. We're gonna to check to make sure the model state is valid. If model state is valid, then we write an if statement. If there's no movie ID, if movie dot movie ID is zero, then we know then we're performing an add. Context dot movies dot add movie. And now we're going to, otherwise we're performing an update. And so keep it, I'll put this in for now Actually, I'll, I'll just comment that out for now. We're, we're gonna come back to that, okay? But if the movie ID is zero, so why would the movie ID be zero? Well, the movie ID would be zero because right here, when we instantiate a new movie, it doesn't have an ID. New movies by default, Movie ID is an int, and its default assumption is ints are zeros when you don't specify otherwise. So if movie ID is zero, we're gonna it's it's a real simple method. We're gonna context movies add. So the add method is gonna put the new movie into our database, and then we have to call a save changes. It's real simple to call context save changes. And, and then, and then we're going to return to the home page. So the way that we can return to the home page is with this return statement. Otherwise, if the model state is not valid, else we got some invalid code here. Uh, or basically, you know, the fields are not correct on from the front end. Um, so there's a one-liner here and I'll explain it. View, keep in mind, view bag action. So the action is either gonna be, remember the action is used for the title and for the heading, right? 
And so it says, hey, is the movie ID zero? Then make sure to set the action to add. If it's not zero, we got a little ternary, then set the action to edit. Okay, so we just kind of set the view bag action and then we um, return the movie to the view. And this is basically going to show our validation errors. Okay, if the model state is valid, we're going to either add a new movie or edit a movie. Okay, so really it's, you know, a couple conditions exist, but within those conditions, the actual code to add a new movie to our database is a pretty simple method. That's why you bring in this DB context, you use the DB context and you just call the add movie and that's step one and then step two, save changes. If you don't save changes, if you don't do line 32, guess what, not gonna work. I think that's step one, step two, let's test it. And so let's click on the add movie link. Let's try and save it without any data so we get our validation errors. Um, so here's my testing movie, 2025, rating is 5.1. Of course, some more validation errors must be 2024, rating between five and that. Let's click save. And there our movie has been added to our database. Where we're at is we got add working. So we got this button working. Let's, let's get this button working, edit. Um, so add and edit are the hard ones. Uh, delete is gonna be much easier. But let's refresh ourselves. So the movie controller, the edit, and it's gonna put the ID up in the URL of, of, uh, of our path, okay? Now this is actually kind of cool. So if I go back to edit of my movie controller. This is a post. We need to write this. Um, I'm sorry. We do not have this page. This is a get request. So line 25 generates a link for a get request for an edit action. So back in movie controller, I'm going to come back here, HTTP get, and I'm going to make my public eye action result. Okay, now check this out. This is an edit action. It accepts an integer ID. It is, MVC has so much convention here. It's going to take that ID that's part of the path and pass it as an argument into this method. So the ID will come into here. We're gonna set the action to edit movie. We're gonna query our movies table. We're gonna find it by the ID. And then we're gonna send it to the edit view, that one movie that it finds out of our movies collection. So the thing that's new here is this find method. The find method is built into link and what find does is it link query to find the movie with the given ID. Okay, this is a primary key search. It is searching by the primary key. The primary key is the movie ID. So now it's gonna send me, if I click on this, it should send me to the edit view here which I'm gonna have to change this a little bit, but my view bag actions should say edit and this should say edit. So let's just try this out. I should be able to click on edit and it'll take me, like I said, to that edit page. Um, let's just make sure I'm refreshed. Okay, so hover edit. Now it says edit movie. Notice the name auto filled, oh, that's awesome. The year auto filled and the rating auto filled. How did that happen? Well, these, the movie was selected in the controller 
And then you send that movie, this line 28, you send that movie to the view. The edit view then can read the name, can read the year, and can read the rating and populate our controls with them. Okay, but all that's left, now we have to edit this post to update the movie. If it's not a new movie, we need to update the movie. Okay, so I'm gonna pause kind of here. Where do I need to show is the new code? Is this right here, right? This is a get request for the edit. And I showed how that works. Um, so as I hinted at, this if has an else block. I'm gonna cut that else block and put it back into here. Uncomment that out. So if it's not a movie ID of zero, if, if it has any other movie ID, then we're going to run an update command instead of an add command. So now when we click that save button here, right, it's going to post to the edit method of the movie controller. So movie controller, post edit method, it's gonna send in the movie. We're going to make sure that the state is valid state. If it's valid state and it's not a new movie, we run the update command. Well, let's make sure it works. Oh, right on. So I'm going to edit my testing movie. Testing movie one, two, three. Let's put in a bad rating. We get our validation controls appropriately. And there we go. So the question is, you know, hey, can I actually see this in the database? Well, your first indicator is that you can kind of close it and reopen it. And yeah, the data is in fact different. But anytime you want to go to your object explorer, go to your database and show, you know, show the table and then oh, wrong database, movies database, and then show the data in the database. And there you get the updated data. Yeah. So it is so we have well crud right we have create new we have read we have edit all we have left is delete uh, turns out deletes pretty easy um, if I'm looking at here I've got a movie controller I've got a delete action and uh, this is a it's gonna send the route ID to specify the movie so um, back in my movie controller, I just need to delete. And I can start to condense this. Like I'm gonna collapse my add method, collapse my edit, collapse this edit. Pretty sure I'm not even using this index method. Um, let's go ahead and write an HTTP get for, de uh, for delete, public. There we go, okay. Um, just like this edit method, it will take the ID from the URL. So uh, I'm going to make a comment. Um, ID parameter is sent from the URL. And that's one of those things that is automatic. And I just think that's super cool that, you know, we didn't have to wire that up. That's automatically wired right so the id parameter is sent from the url into this method we run a find method to find it by its primary key by its id and then we send that to we need to make a view called delete okay so let's um let's make a delete view and it's gonna be pretty simple um, inside of movie, let's make a uh, movie folder inside of our views folder. So views slash movie, we're going to add a new view called delete. This has a model of a movie. And 
view bag title is delete movie. And we're basically going to say, you know, confirm deletion. And let's, um, we can put the movie name inside of an H3. So we could say at model dot name. And so the movie that we send in, we can pull its name out. We'll do a little form, not from, form. ASP action is delete. Method is post. So we have to write this method. Um, we don't need any validation controls here. It's not like um, we're not validating any data. But we do need to store the movie ID. Um, because this movie, need, the movie ID has to be sent back to the controller. So, you know, we're sending the movie into the view and if you don't include the movie ID, um, back to the controller, it's not going to know what movie to delete. So you basically have to hide that. Then here's a button type of submit, button danger, the, the class of delete, and a cancel that takes you home. Okay, so this is the delete view of which we're almost there where we can delete. All we have left to do is to write this delete post. This is our delete get page, but we need a delete post. All right, uh, just to show where we're at here, um, our delete page should now show the movie we want to delete. And so confirm deletion, but the delete doesn't work yet because we haven't wired up the post method. Okay, so when again, when you go to delete, you could say delete the matrix, but it's not working. And your cancel should work, which just navigates you back. So this is the current state of our app. So the question here is, is there any way for the user to see the ID? And if you're savvy enough to inspect the page, um, and we go to, well, the ID is in plain view there, but the question is, if I kind of go into my div class container, main, and here's my form, there, here's another way of seeing the input type of hidden value of two. So if it wasn't in plain sight, it, you know, it, in, still it, it still can be seen, yeah. That's why you really, in practical, you just put a, a GUID that doesn't mean, it's a number that doesn't mean anything to anybody. It's just a randomly unique identifier. It's not an important piece of data, it's just a unique piece of data. Good question. So then the last thing here on the movie controller, here's our get, let's wire up a post, HTTP post. And we call a remove method to remove the movie off of the context, save changes, redirect to the home page. Right, this is the index method of the home controller. So notice my return type, I can return a view, I can return a method, redirect to action. There's different kind of return types, return to view. So like returning to this view is different than returning to this view. So there's different ways that you can return to different views from your controller and we'll, we'll hit on that in deeper detail. But for right now, these are just, you know, different ways. So there's our posts and now our delete should be working. Uh, 
and if I say delete testing movie, delete is gone. All right. So I'm um, pretty happy with the state of the application so far. We've got crud going on on movies. Um, but obviously databases are more complex systems than single tables. Okay, so we're in a relational database management system, so you're gonna have related tables. And so uh, we're gonna work with related data. Now, right now, single table, um, no relationships. We're gonna add a simple one-to-one -one relationship um, in that our movies are going to uh, be related to their movie genre. And so we're gonna create a genre table of which we would start by adding a genre model. So let's in our models folder, right click add a class called genre. Now in our movie table, um, Movie IDs, new movies, like if I check out my new movies, it'll generate a new movie ID for it. Because it's an int, because it's an int, it will generate a new movie ID, and that's the convention that's at play here. Okay, so when I add a movie, test movie, and whatever, uh, 2004. Okay, now again, movies are kind of invisible, but as I click edit, you could see that there, there was an ID automatically added. Um, so what I'm going to point out about genres is that our genre ID is a string. And because it's a string, uh, it's not auto-generated. Um, so just pointing out that that's a convention by MVC, that if, it's, if your model is a int, it will be auto-generated. This is not auto-generated. Um, and let's also add a name. Sir? No, I don't think so. We don't need a using statement. Uh, nope. Okay, so now we've got a movie class and we've got a genre class, but there's no relationship between the two. Um, and so we need to go to our movie class and now that we have a genre we could say that a movie has a genre and so the way that we do that is by giving it a a property that is type genre uh, and so you can come right down here public genre called genre and this interesting syntax, but we'll just set kind of the default to null um, and get that little exclamation point here saying that don't worry about that warning. So uh, a movie now has a genre. So this is gonna create that relationship between the two. Now this is a one-to-one -one relationship. One movie has one genre. I would actually argue that this might not even be great database design, but it does show you, you know, cause you could just have a string called genre and well, then I guess you would allow any string to go in there. Like this would be a preset of genre list that you have to have a, one of the presets. Yeah. Can you alternatively just store the genre ID and have that point to the... That's kind of what this is gonna do, is oh. that this is gonna really store the genre ID like a primary key, form key thing. Okay. Yeah, so that's where we're going there. Um, which, yeah, that's exactly what the next line of code is, Scott. So um, here I'm going to say please enter a genre and we're going to have the genre ID here. So 
So this is this is an interesting thing here. Uh, these are two genres. So we have we have two properties here, um, and one's called the navigation property. It's called the navigation property. Um, why is my hotkey not working? So this is a navigation property that kind of links the two tables together. But then we're going to store the genre ID. Um, And the last thing I'm going to do here is say that I actually don't want validation to happen on this navigation property. So uh, some of you came across this already, that you have a, a property that you do not want to validate on the front end. And so you could do that with this validate never property. Now, uh, I, I kind of specified that this is referred to as a navigation property that essentially links uh, the two together. Um, and so really, I don't think that this genre ID is required, but there is a note that I took. It says your entity, yeah, this is called a uh, foreign key property, foreign key property. And I took a note that says your entity classes are easier to work with if you add F FK properties that refer to the primary key in the related entity class. I can scroll up, but this is the new code, so I just want to give everyone a chance to write that. Yeah, um, so to Connor's point, to add validate never, it's actually in a different namespace. So it brought in this using statement, uh, which is in a different namespace than all these other properties for our validation fields. So that was a good observation that this was automatically brought in for me when I was typing. Okay, so now that our classes, we can just build this and make sure that everything's clean. One build succeeded, we can close our classes. The next thing I wanna do is kind of update my seed data, right? Remember the seed data was in the movie context class, right? So I, I have a movies table, but I also need a genres table. So let's bring in a public DB set of genre called genres and we're going to set some genres so here in our has data method um, this is a has data for movies we're going to basically write a similar line of code model builder entity genre model builder entity genre woo hoo that's ugly um control a control f okay why is that so ugly control a kf no it's, it's formatted ugly because this probably isn't compiling Remember the genre ID is a string? So like we would put D for drama and C for comedy. And we would put A for action. Um, so action comedy drama let's copy a few more in here horror i'm just making sure i'm writing this in the right place it, it's fine horror musical Uh, 
rom com. And last but not least, sci fi. Okay, so we, we kind of first make the table of the genres, which this order of operations does matter, right? You have to create the genres first, and then you can give your movies a genre. So the Godfather would say genre of um, drama. So again, this is the genre property that we just created and genre ID ID right the genre ID there we go genre ID comma genre ID uh, for Casablanca what is Casablanca sure is it a drama the Matrix. Okay, and as you're typing this out, uh, has data ends, curly, curly. This, this looks good. Um, okay, what we're doing here is changing our database design. Right, so anytime we change our database design, like the tables in our database, their data types, their relationships, anytime you change the database design, you have to add a migration. So this is like a, a we're going to run those same two commands next that we ran for the first migration. Yeah. So the question that came in, it's a good question, is could you give a movie multiple IDs? Because a movie can be both a drama and an, and an action. And well, sure, we could, but here's, right now, we're not saying that. Right now, we're saying that you can have a single genre, right? Right here, there's a single genre. It's not a list of genre. You could have a list of genre here, in which case you could apply multiple. And that would be a one-to-many relationship instead of a one-to-one. -one. Okay, so the answer is yes. Not how we've coded it currently, but you could definitely do that, and we will. Cool, good question. Okay, so where I left off was like, hey, we've got some new seed data and we've got a new database design, so we need to create a new migration. Well, package manager council, add hyphen migration. And we'll just call this, you know, genre. And let's see what that errors out. Okay, now I didn't error out, but you can see it opened up the new file for the genre migration, right? So these are going to be changes it makes to the database. So you add a migration first, and then you run update hyphen database. And if you run those two commands, ooh, uh, I got some red squigglies. So... Let me take a quick look. I'm glad that I encountered this problem um, because um, if I look at my movies table, it's got an extra testing movie in here. And so this is not matching the seed data. This is not matching the seed data that I initially configured. And so this is basically an extra movie that I don't need. So what I need to do is I need to delete this movie so that I'm not losing any data. Because if, if I were to update the database without an error, I would have lost that movie. Okay? So that was the error message that it was throwing. It's like, hey, you got extra movie in there. Um, you know, what do we do with this movie? Do you delete that movie on Cascade? Like... What do you do? And, and those, those are all settings that you can do. Um, I'm pretty sure that was, that was the problem. Now let me go ahead and run my update database command again. And then I can help you guys with your errors if mine works. Okay, there it is. Good. Okay, 
very happy now refreshing movies um, table if I refresh uh, I've got genre in movies and if I view my data here my movies all now have a single drama awesome okay so now that our database has genres and movies related to one another um, let's start by displaying that in our home page, right? So our home page, let's go our home controller. How about that? Um, so controllers, controllers, home controller. <coughs> so here's our link query to include movies. We need to modify our link query to include, so we add a dot include because this is a related okay now this include comes from namespace entity framework course we have to bring in a using statement okay so essentially bring in the entire genre object including the genre id and the genre name okay so we're selecting the entire genre id and genre name inside of our um, movies so when when you're selecting a movie select again its entire name so we have to bring in this include statement yeah, this is the same query that we had before, just it's it's method chaining, right? So I did a dot include in front of the order by. And we had to bring in this entity framework core. Entity framework core allowed me to bring in this include method. And then now I'm going to go to the, the view and display that genre um when the page loads so in the home view so view home index let's add a column um th for the genre which is our third cell so here td at movie dot genre dot name so now our home page should display the associated name of said genre. And drama, drama, action. Very good. I forgot to pause there, so I just recorded a bunch of nothingness, me checking my cell phone. <laughs> um, okay, so what we need to do next is um, movie controller, edit. And so when we're posting our edit, this is not working, and it's because the model state is not valid, and we don't um, send the genres back to the view to display the genre so we have to write that same query that we did before 
to get our genre list back into view bag here. Now, I think, If I go to add a movie, there we go. Now it says please enter a rating as you would expect. One, two, 2010, four, okay. Okay, so this part I can understand, I think is a little bit confusing, just the way it's going back and forth between controller and view, controller and view. What we do is the controller hits a, a post and we receive a movie from the view, the movie is not in a valid state. So we're gonna go back to the view. We're gonna send it back to the view. We're gonna send the movie back to the view. But we have to have this genres in our view bag to load the page again with the genres. It, unfortunately, it doesn't like stay there. Um, And so on the get request, um, you know, this is the post request. And up here on the get request, right, we kind of load the genres. So here's a get request. It loads the view. And then you go to post. And the post says invalid, you know, invalid model. I'm gonna send you back to the view, but you gotta you gotta load up the genres again for that view to use inside of view bag. Uh, that was causing the error. Um, and so now, I mean that's essentially it for genres. Um, a couple last couple last what I would call cleanup tasks, which are pretty nice features. Here, if I go to add movie, we can select it. If we go to edit, because it uses the same view. Um, Oh, no, edit's not working yet. What did I leave out of edit? Probably the same thing. So let's go edit, get. We have to modify our get request to also have the edit. So here's edit movie. Same thing as before, view bag, genres. Put the genres in the view bag. Same thing as before. If I click on edit, now I can load that up. And I change that to action. Casablanca is now action. Okay, last couple things. Um, notice our URLs. Um, we haven't really talked about best practices on URLs, but um, the convention here is the movie controller and the edit action. And the reason that these are capitalized is because our movie controller is a capital M and the edit method is a capital E. Uh, convention is for URLs to be lowercased. And so there's a simple way to lowercase these URLs, which is considered more user friendly. Um, and that can be done with a one liner inside of um, our let me collapse, 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 collapse. Program CS. And here's builder services. After this, we'll do builder services. Add routing. Options arrow. Curlies. Options dot lowercase URLs, lower case URLs is true. It's also considered a user friendly to have a, a trailing slash at the end of your URL. So by default, you can go back and look, we don't have trailing slashes and now we do. So if I look at um, edit now, it's lower cased, and we got a trailing slash at the very end. So these are a couple of things we can do to our URLs to make them more user friendly. And 
even to make them more user friendly, you can add what's called, it's kind of a fun word, you can add a slug. Yes, the little slimy creature at the end of your URL. Um, because people don't know that the movie ID of two is, you know, Casablanca. So we can actually put that title in, in the URL to, again, make it more user friendly. Um, the way that we're going to do that is with just a couple of things here. Notice in our default routes, we've got the home controller index ID. Afterwards, let's add a slug. Uh, obviously, the question mark means an optional piece here. And now in our movie class, models movie, we can add a read only property for slugs. So right under rating, I'm going to add read only property for uh, the slug. And this is just a string. It's a string. It says, hey, if there's a name, replace any uh, spaces with hyphens, make it lowercase, separate it with, if there's a year, put the year behind it. So a little C sharp to um, put, put a string that includes the name and the year and those things together concatenated together, replacing characters, um, come together to form up this thing called slug. Almost done. Okay, to finish this off, we actually need to modify our links to include the slug. Um, so in our view, the next thing we're gonna do is open up the edit uh, and delete links in the home view. So I'm going, let me close it all down because I got a lot going. I'll close all tabs. Close all tabs. And then I'm going views, home index. And when I go to the edit, I'm going to add another, this is another helper tag, ASP route hyphen slug equals that resolved to the at movie because there's a read only slug we can now read the movies slug and we're going to add that helper tag to both the edit and the delete page so if it's working we should see that slug up in the URL. When we edit, there's my slug. And if I go to delete the Godfather, again, space is re replaced in the year at the end. Pretty cool. All right, so that's the end of this tutorial. I realize you guys at the very end here kind of left you, left you behind. We'll get you caught up, no problem, okay? Uh, I'll stop here.